be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Some Sadducees, those who deny that there is a resurrection, came forward and put this question to Jesus, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us, if someone's brother dies, leaving a wife but no child, his brother must take the wife and raise up descendants for his brother. Now, there were seven brothers. The first married a woman but died childless. Then the second and the third married her, and likewise all the seven died childless. Finally, the woman also died. Now at the resurrection, whose wife will that woman be? For all seven had been married to her. Jesus said to them, The children of this age marry and remarry, but those who are deemed worthy to attain to the coming age and to the resurrection of the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage. They can no longer die, for they are like angels, and they are the children of God because they are the ones who will rise. That the dead will rise, even Moses made known in the passage about the bush when he called out, Lord, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And he is not God of the dead, but of the living. For to him all are alive. The Gospel of the Lord. I was looking out my office window earlier this week. My office downtown, I'm pretty fortunate. I have a, an office up on the, on the penthouse level of our building, which everywhere else in America we would refer to as the third floor. And, um, and I, but I have this great big window that has this amazing, inspiring view of the parking lot. And on clear days, I can see all the way to the beer trucks parked on Doty Street. So I'm looking out this window, and I see down in the parking lot a black Jeep Cherokee with a parking ticket on the windshield. And I thought to myself, good, good. That doesn't belong to any of our staff. And we pay... We pay good money for those parking places for our employees and, and visitors. So I was glad that the parking authority is out doing what it does and driving around and patrolling the lots and giving tickets to cars without permits. It's clearly posted on the lot that you need a permit to park there. So I was delighted to see that. And as I was looking at that, a young man stepped out of the passenger side, the passenger door, walked around to the front of, the, of, the, of that Jeep and took the ticket off the windshield. And he didn't look angry. He didn't look indignant. He just looked defeated. His head was hung. His shoulders were stooped. And he just looked defeated. And then I saw... This woman behind the driver's, uh, on the driver's side behind the steering wheel, and she was just holding her head in her hands. And then I, I looked closer at the vehicle, I realized this is really in rough shape. The vehicle was older than I had at first thought, it was rusted out, it was banged up. The, the rear door on the passenger side had a window that was stuck in the down position and I was hoping there were no children in there with the weather we've been having and suddenly more than anything else in the world I wanted to just go and pay that parking ticket for them I thought I don't think they can afford a $35 parking ticket I think that's a big deal for them that's going to have to come out of some place out of grocery money out of heat I don't know and I remembered 
how when Michelle and I were first starting out, that was us. We had nothing. We were driving old cars that were really difficult to keep running. And an unexpected expense, even something as simple as a parking ticket, would cause a great deal of anxiety and stress, and it might even cause an argument and tear at the relationship. And I just wanted to go down there and take care of that further, so I ran from my office, and I raced down the stairs into the parking lot. But by the time I got there, they were gone. I had missed, I had missed my chance. As I stood there in my own self-satisfied judgment, I burned off time and I missed the chance. The great Jesuit theologian James Keenan from Boston College tells us that when you look at sin in the gospel, the way Jesus understood sin, it wasn't about the faults and failings of our human condition. It wasn't about, it wasn't a, about parking where you're not supposed to park. For Jesus, sin was really about passing up the opportunities to love each other. When we're given that opportunity to love someone and we're indifferent to it. When we're given that opportunity to alleviate another person's suffering and we're ambivalent toward it. That, he says, is how Jesus taught sin. Thus the story of the Good Samaritan and so many of those other stories. And I realized that as I was standing up looking out my window in that sort of self-satisfied judgment about this parking ticket and thinking about that, wasting time wasting time with my own sense of self-righteousness. The window was closing and I was losing that chance to share an expression of loving support with someone who I think really needed it. And how much, how much time do we waste in our own lives in this short life we have? How much time do we waste with our own sense of self-righteousness. How many opportunities to give supportive love to someone do we miss simply because we're preoccupied with our own sense of judgment, self-righteousness? When Jesus talks, and he does so often when he talks about this age and the realm of man versus the realm of God, I think this is what he's talking about. He is talking about this mindset of being preoccupied with the trivialities the rules and the regulations and who should be doing what and how they should be doing it. And not that we don't need rules and regulations. We need parking laws or we would have chaos. We need that, but, but, he, but he's saying that those who are stuck in this mindset, in this realm of thinking, this, this age of thought, are so preoccupied with that stuff that they miss, we miss, the bigger picture, the next stage. Those who attain, he uses the word attain, I like that. Those who attain the next stage, the next level of thinking, the next level of being, don't let those trivialities block and get in the way of the outflow of love. That's what he's saying. That when we're stuck in this mindset, when we're stuck in this age, we let all that stuff block the flow of our love and those who attain to that higher order, to, the, to that godly realm. Don't let any of that stuff ever stop us from 
living and loving with that deeply compassionate heart. So let us, let us die to the small-mindedness of restriction and rise up to the openness and the outpouring of God's infinite, unending compassion.